Hi, this is the Democratic Alliance Labour Report, Friday the 17th of March 2023. And thank you for tuning in and thank you for passing this on to friends and family. I really appreciate that. There are a couple of issues that have to be discussed this week and looking backwards and also looking forwards. The Democratic Alliance is on top of everything. Obviously, the strike in the public sector and the settlement is something we must discuss. The senior managers in the public service we must discuss. And obviously, we've got to discuss that stay away um, or purported stay away for this forthcoming Monday. So thank you for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram. I'm a DAMP, Labour spokesman person for the Democratic Alliance. And it is Friday, the 17th of March, 2023. Well, let's first have a look at the public sector strike, in particular in Nahawu, in the hospitals. You've all seen the, the horrific uh, videos, horrific uh, reports, uh, deaths that occurred because of the strike, uh, hospitals that have been looted and destroyed. Uh, we've seen everything happening over there and very little action. Uh, unfortunately, each one of the ministers that should have been involved have been absent, wholly absent. They appeared three, four days later, in particular the health minister, who had just been reappointed back into his position. He was absent for those first three days, where we saw the real dire action take place. The Minister of Labour, Employment and Labour, well, I don't know where he was. Uh, we reported on this last week as well. Uh, whenever there's, the chips are down and there's action to be taken, uh, he stays away. I'm going to call today's report... Um, Malice in Blunderland. Um, it can only be malice in Blunderland, what's going on. And of course, the, the wonderful Mad Hatter, um, uh, often people call him the Minister of Police. Um, he was also absent during the strike. Um, but of course, it now seems to have come to an end. I did predict, and you will recall, I said I can write the script. I predicted that they were demanding the 3% um, the government had demanded the 3%, they had actually implemented it, the staff wanted 10%, inflation was at 6.9 and I said they will settle at 6.9, well they've settled I believe at 7%, they can't afford it, the state doesn't have the money, they did this last time, they reneged on it, they um, were duplicitous in their behaviour, government was absolutely duplicitous in its behaviour towards its alliance partner, Kasatu. I think they're going to do this again. Uh, let's write the script for the day after the elections in 2024. Um, they'll probably renege on the payments saying they don't have the money to give the staff the extra money that they would agreed on. So let's, let's have a look at that. Let's put that in our pocket and let's see where we go down the line. Of course, what's on everyone's lips is what's going to happen on Monday. Um, the uh, EFF um, have recklessly been making statements, they've been reckless in their behaviour, they've been actually quite dangerous in their behaviour because the speech itself uh, is much more scary than what they can actually do. They can't do all that much um, and the reality is the EFF is a tiny little party straggling along and there's not all that much they can do. Um, they've threatened that they're going to try and bring cities to a standstill. They've threatened all of this. I think we're overreacting. People uh, sort of love to overreact, the press especially, uh, television, radio. Um, well, bless him. Uh, Jordan Hill Lewis, the mayor of Cape Town, and we must bless him, has said, bring it on. We don't care. We're going to actually defend our city. We have no problem with that. Nothing's going to happen in Cape Town. I don't believe it will. I don't believe that there'll be any issue. Yes, uh, EFF will shout victory. They'll say the school stayed away. Well, let me let you in a little secret. The <laughs> Minister of Education had in fact closed the schools for this Monday, but that was already gazetted, I think, seven or eight months ago, long before the EFF had even considered a possible stay away. The schools were staying away anyway. Staff, well, thousands of staff have taken leave for Monday, not because of the EFF, but because Tuesday is a public holiday and they can have a wonderful long weekend. So again, 
uh, nothing to do with the EFF that stay away. People will be staying away because they're going to wherever they go on long weekends or going to have a, a wonderful braai uh, during that time. So again, the EFF will squeal and shout great victory. But the staff are staying away because they wanted the long weekend. The schools are staying away because the minister closed the schools. And quite frankly, I don't believe they're going to be supported by the trade unions, although one or two said they'll come and support them. But they won't now because they've settled their outstanding dispute with regard to their wages. So they're not really interested in the EFF. Uh, I don't think anyone's interested in the EFF, quite frankly. But OK, uh, they've called for their stay away. Let them have a little bit of fun. If they do make any sort of inroads or any damage, hopefully the government has the guts to actually act against them. I know Uncle Cyril has got no guts. Uh, he's never grown a pair. And uh, as for a backbone, well, I don't think so. So let's see what actually happens, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't shed a tear uh, if it was a complete damn squib. And let's talk about it afterwards and say Bagram predicted a damn squib. He was right. So let's, let's have a look at it. Another issue that we need to look at is why is the civil service not providing any um, work done? Why are they so useless? Why don't things get done? Why is every single state-owned enterprise uh, can't, can't do its work? Well, we know the main reason is card redeployment and the Democratic Alliance um, has done amazing work, absolutely amazing work. I must take my hat off and salute those that have been at the forefront of exposing the cadre deployment, where people have been put in jobs purely because they're members of the ANC, but not been able to do the jobs. Uh, we're seeing that across the board in almost every single state-owned enterprises, uh, in the civil service, in some companies as well. Um, we've seen it all over. Of course, BE is another issue. People are appointed on the basis of skin color as opposed to ability, which is also useless and, and reckless. Uh, bad law. Um, there is a glimmer of hope there because uh, in the SONA, you might recall, uh, Cyril did say that maybe small companies should be exempt from BE. Uh, let's hope he puts uh, some, some, actually not just talk, but some walk into it. Uh, I wouldn't hold my breath because Cyril's not known to, to do actually anything. He's very good at speaking. Uh, that's about it. But there's another reason which has come out this last week, um, and thanks to MP Mimi Gondwe. Um, Mimi asked a question in Parliament. She's a member of the DA. And she asked how many senior managers in the public service don't have qualifications? And we've now found 1,800 senior managers in the civil service just don't have any qualifications at all. They effectively can't do their work. It's not their fault. It's the fault of the people who appointed them. Probably mostly cadre deployment, but even if it wasn't, if people were appointing friends and family, um, again, they don't have the ability to actually do the work. You can't force someone to do something that doesn't know how to do it in the first place. And... Thank you to the Democratic Alliance. This has now been exposed. And hopefully when the government is removed in 24 and a new dispensation comes in, that we're going to have to start looking at the civil service and see who's qualified, who can do the job. And it's going to be a long haul, but it's got to be done. NEDLAC, NEDLAC has given permission for a stay away on Monday to some of the trade unions. But as I said, I don't think many of the trade unions are going to take them up on this because... Quite frankly, they've now got what they asked for, or the government can't afford it. They've got what they asked for, and why should they stay away? Um, but most of the places will be closed anyway, as I said earlier on. So it's, it's, not, it's not an issue. Government, unfortunately, is very easily swayed by the trade union movement. They're desperate for the trade union movement to support the ANC in those upcoming elections. Without the ANC and without the Kasatu backing, uh, we've got nothing um, backing the ANC altogether. And of course, at the end of the day, they have to keep Kasatu happy and sweet. And the way to do it is to give them the demands, give in to their demands. And I believe they've settled at the 7%, which government doesn't have. The Auditor General is looking at this, said they didn't have the money. The uh, Minister of Finance said they didn't have the money. We saw this play playbook 
four years ago when they signed a three-year agreement and they didn't have the money to pay in the third year and they just shot the trade unions in the back and the trade unions seem to forget that government has been their biggest opposition. Not an alliance partner, but their biggest opposition. We've seen some shenanigans in Swanee where the mayor was in and then out and then in and out again. Uh, hopefully, as an employee, they will take action against him. He's now resigned, but he's taken salary when he shouldn't have been taking salary. So hopefully they take action, recoup that salary. He lied. He was sequestrated. He said he wasn't sequestrated. Then he said that he was rehabilitated. He wasn't rehabilitated. He's a liar. And hopefully they'll recover that, that money back from them. And of course, just finally, I just want to mention the law courts right through the system have not been given generators. So the law courts are not functioning properly. That starts at the labor court and goes right across the board to all the courts. And without proper justice, we've got problems in this country. Again, with the Democratic Alliance government, this won't happen. We'll first have to fix ESCOM, but we will certainly make sure that the law courts run properly. So thank you for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram, DAMP, Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. And it's Friday, the 17th of March, 2023. Thank you.